Welcome to Matt's Garden Life. In this video, I'm going to cover one type of graft that I prefer. Here are some grafts that I did a year ago on a fig tree. There are several other methods to grafting and I like this one because it's fairly easy and very successful in my experience. I rarely see this grafting method fail. A friend of mine taught me this graft and it's a bit of a mix between the Z graft and a whip and tongue graft. Okay, it's important to keep your cutting tools clean when grafting. I like to use a spray bottle with some rubbing alcohol in it. Spray your cutting edges and wipe them dry prior to grafting. I like to graft between the leaf nodes, so I cut just below the node and leave a plain piece of branch to work with. I prefer to use a box cutter for grafting instead of a grafting knife because they're always sharp with a quick swap of the blade. I start by whittling an angle cut a little over an inch in length. And when you get the end of your cut to almost a flat sharp edge, take the blade and cut on the bark side. Make a slice so that the bark flaps open at about the same length as your shaved edge on the opposite side. It's hard to see from this angle, but when I make a cut on the scion, you'll be able to see it better. Try to move the blade away from you when whittling if possible. It takes some practice to get the angle just right. Don't rush it at this point and try to shave too much off at once. A little bit at a time while you fine tune the cut is best. You can stop and match up the pieces to check the fit. Be careful and brace your hands against each other when you're cutting on the opposite end to make that flap. Or when you brace your hands together in a way so that if the blade slips, it, you won't cut yourself. I've cut myself a few times while grafting and you don't want to have to graft your finger back together. It takes a little while to heal and it's never 100% again. After finishing the scion, fit the two pieces together like a puzzle. When the pieces are snugly fit together, use the thick plastic green grafting tape to secure the graft. I like to start at the bottom of the graft and wrap the tape up to the top and then back down again. I make sure to keep a good amount of tension on the tape and wrap the graft very tight to hold the pieces together and keep air and water out. After wrapping the cutting, I make a loop in the tape and tie it off. Then I write the variety and date on the leftover end of the grafting tape. On this one, I decided to shorten the scion just above the leaf node, leaving three existing nodes. Next, I use a parafilm to wrap the scion and keep it from drying out. The parafilm is a waxy, fragile tape that will break down easily in the elements. You can wrap the entire cutting covering the leaf nodes because the new growth will just push through the parafilm. Cover the entire scion, including the end. Make sure not to use plastic wrap or grafting tape for this portion. Next, wrap the graft and the scion with a piece of aluminum foil to protect it from the sun and other elements. And that's it. Like I stated before, there are many other types of grafts and I may cover them in another video, but this is my go-to graft right now. I use it on citrus, stone fruit, mulberries, apples, and pomegranates with a high success rate. This is the end of this tutorial. Go forth and create your own mutant multi-grafted fruit tree. Subscribe and or comment if you feel like it. And if you're interested in ordering some custom engraved tree and garden tags, you can email me. Stick around if you want to listen to some stories and additional show and tell. This fig tree is a desert king. It grows very well here in Arizona and I like the structure of it. There are many lateral branches that are good for grafting onto. The fruit of the Desert King is nothing to get excited about, so I like to use it as a rootstock. This tree has seven different varieties of figs on it at the moment, and plenty of room for more. Grafting opens up many possibilities for growing plenty of different kinds of fruit in a small area, or you can just change the type of tree you have because the one you planted isn't what you expected. And instead of taking that tree out of the ground and planting another one, you can take advantage of the existing root structure. I like to graft limes onto lemon trees because they are heavy producers, and I don't need that many limes or lemons to have a whole tree worth. 
the tree you're grafting onto must be a like variety, like a peach on a peach or nectarine on a peach or citrus on citrus. I've had issues trying to graft Mewa kumquats onto a sour orange rootstock. They require a different rootstock called Trifolata or Flying Dragon. This is a chip bud graft on citrus. I recovered the budwood from an amazing orange tree that I grew up with uh, at my childhood home. I remember growing up with this amazing orange tree in our front yard and it was huge and must have been very old already when we moved in there in the 80s when I was in third grade. The oranges were full of seeds, they didn't peel well, but they were perfect for juicing and made a very rich dark colored orange juice that made all other fresh squeezed orange juice just seem watered down in comparison. My mom lived in that house until she passed in 2014 and up until that time I was always looking forward to citrus season and picking oranges from that tree for the amazing juice that you could make with it. I still don't know what kind of orange tree that was and I'd never found another like it. I went to a few citrus clinics and fruit tree growing forums to try to figure it out and I was still unable to figure out what variety it was. I knew that the only way to get that kind of orange tree again was to get a cutting from the tree and graft it onto a rootstock. And grafting is one way to ensure an exact clone of the parent plant. A few years after my mom had passed, I went by the house. The new owners had renovated the entire home and pruned that orange tree back so much that it was now in serious decline. And much of the bark had been sunburned and was peeling away. There was a little bit of growth up towards the top of the tree. I knocked the door and asked the new owner if I could have a few cuttings and explained my intentions. And the new owner was uh, very accommodating and welcomed my request. I took some cuttings and grafted them onto some small root stalks that I picked up from Lowe's. I used the chip bud graft on three separate root stalks and none of them took. I tried it one more time a month later and then all three of them took. The best I can tell is that it was a little too early the first time I tried. It's important to make sure that there is new active growth on the rootstock before grafting onto it. I grew out three orange trees that were clones of that tree that I grew up with as a child. Two of the trees are at friends' houses and one is at my place. And in 2022, around Christmas time, my brother and I shared a few glasses of orange juice from that tree that we grew up with. It was a truly nostalgic experience and here's that orange tree full of blossoms that I started from a small chip bud graft. Thanks for hanging in there for story time. If you have any questions, you can comment on this video or email me.